as previously we have created multiple DAX images. We have seen how we can add the text box as I click here and I can type any name for our dashboard. Currently we are preparing the sales analysis dashboard. At the home tab, you got the text box option. At the insert group, as you click it, you can place a text box at your own space and add any text which you want. It is mostly used for adding the headings or adding a description to a video. So let me delete it. Yes, here are the three top buttons. It says removes, highlight, spotlight or format. Currently, I want to remove it. And the next thing, as previously, we have learned how we can see the data, how we can understand the data, the key images, which we created as a DAX, total sales, profits, total costs, etc., product table, the sales table. We have seen the different variations of calculations, how we can add a new column in our master data or a fact table, and then see its analysis result. Here, the modeling view, we have seen how we can prepare the data models effectively. Currently, I have to a scheme which is called star schema. You can see on your screen that the lookups table are available at the top of your model and below there's a fact table that is called the sales, the master table. See, whenever po I point toward the pointer, it headed over to the green light and points toward the both the lookup values. For instance, I have selected the customer data. So it selects the customer index column in the customer data and refers to the similar column available in my master sales that are the fact table that is called customer name index column. So as I double click on this pointer, it takes a while and says edit relationship as pop-up screen appears in front of you. It says the master data sales, the customer name index matches with the customer index will be in the customer table and see the results. I want to make this relationship active you no need to check out this box. Only click OK to this box. Yes. So these are the some basics of data modeling. Next, you have the product table and their AU regions, and you have made a multiple relationships. That's a perfect thing. These relationships are used when we want to look up from the one value. The lookup functions will be in Excel, X lookup, H lookup, V lookup are not available here in the Microsoft Power BI. So for this, they have provided you a separate window of the data modeling and relationships. These work as a lookups. I can understand, I can tell you this concept very easily. See, for instance, we want to see the relationships. I will go to my insert group under the home tab and I will select the table or the matrix, whichever I want. So currently, I have selected a matrix. It says rows. I want to select my customer names for my customer data. And then again, it says give the column reference. I can give a column reference or I can type a value, select a value first. It says give the reference. For instance, I have my sales table and you can see my total sales column. You can see the difference of total sales of each column here i have to increase the size of my table matrix as i increase the size you can see the multiple customers and their related sales my total sales are 154 million you can see the sum of total sales column name and the customer name i can add my customers as a horizontal uh, ascending order or descending order whichever i want i also can Ascend or descend my total sales, highest at the top and the lowest at the bottom. See, my highest sales at the top and my lowest sales at the bottom. See the difference. But see here, there is a relationship. The medicine, my customer name has a 4 million sales altogether. See how this works as my customers have a relationship building. If I delete this relationship, then what is the result? Let me see it and show you to you. As I click here, see it says all together sum of my total sales 154 million of each customer. And that's the wrong thing. 
how can a single customer can make 154 million sales of all the combination of years? This is not working perfectly. For this, we have to do the lookup. We have to make a relation. And I'm going to make a relation again. A customer index from customer data can be used drag and drop approach and paste here and the sales table. Let's wait for a second. You got your result. As immediately I make a relation, it automatically updates its table. And see, you got your results. Here I have the three buttons in the top. Filter on visuals. I can place a filter. Currently, there are no filters available. See the next, there is a focus mode. As I click on the focus mode, it gives us a long screen answers. It highlights our visual. Next, more option. I can export my data to an Excel workbook. It will be copied as a CSV file. Next, I can help a show as a table. I can remove my visual. I can spotlight it. I can see only this visual highlighted. Sorted descendingly as my high sales have been highest. I can sort it ascendingly. I have okay, sort by some of total sales. I can sort by customer names. Yes. Again, I have a format option. If I click here, the format tab appears in the front of me on the right hand side. You can see you can add a title to your matrix. You have the size, style, and style option. You have multiple options available here. I can remove my row subtotals or the column subtotals as well. Cell elements is a wonderful option. So it says apply setting to a sum of cells element. Yes, I want to apply. So now let us look the conditional property. It says apply settings to which settings? Yes, I have a numeric value of total sales. So see, if I click on the background color, it will highlight all my lowest sales as well as the highest sales. You can see the difference. If I click on the icons and then turn off my background color, you can see that wherever it green highlights, that means that it's in highest sales and the yellow pointing was the increasing sale. The words increase, the red indicates that the lowest sales are there available. So we can make a decision as well as the who customer should be focused on the first. Next, we have the data bars option. Can do multiple conditional formatting available and we can make our data play with it. That's a wonderful thing here. Now, let me close it. Yes, after removing it, and now I'm going to close my format tab. So, see, it's a blank canvas available in the front of you. Now, we're going to start working here. We go to the morning tab and we're going to create a new table using a DAX major. That's a date table where because in this webinar, we're going to see the word time intelligence measures and the timely calculation, the growth of my sales, the growth of the cost in timely changes. So for this, we need the dates and that how we can calculate, we can see it. So I'm going to type my dates name, my table name, and then there's a function called calendar auto. So what does that calendar auto do? Calendar auto, it specifies that returns a table with one column of dates calculated from the model automatically. So we have a dates available in the model. It will be fetching, it will be copying, control C and preparing a hybrid table in artificial intelligence by using the machine learning techniques and then pasting it in a separate table called dates. And though those dates would be copied from a fact table that is a sales table available. So here, calendar auto, it says that fiscal year and month. So that is placed in the square bracket. We don't want to add a square brackets. We only need to close the parenthesis, keep it blank and press enter key from a keyboard. So within a second, we create a date table. As I click here, yes, I have a date calendar representing and then date hierarchy. If I click here, can see the year, quarter, month, and the dates already being formatted here. So yes, how can you differentiate between a table calculated and a table you got imported? So see there, there's a table icon along my previous table, and here is a table icon, but I have a calculator in front of it. So yes, that's a differentiating thing available. And here, the key my is, it's also a table. So I have a column one, 
the blank column we already created. So I want to delete this column or I have an option to hide. Currently, I'm hiding my column. So see, there is another difference that now it has been changed to the measure. Now it has been changed to the calculator. This calculator I can represent that it is a calculation. The dates and my key images are being used for the calculations. Now let us make a relationship between the dates available in the fact table and my date table. So here I have my date table on the right hand side. I'm going to place here near my lookup tables. So yes, and now I'm going to find my dates available in the sales table. I have the order dates available. I'm going to drag and drop it with the dates available in the date table. So yes, I got a result of a lookup. If I click here, so see, I got my sales Thursday, May 31st, and see that the same results here. Yippee, we got a new thing to learn. So yes, my dates table have been selected. So see, at a first, we have a column tool optional where you can say a tab, and it's the first group called structure, the name dates, Yes, we have a date table name. Next thing it says date and time structure. We don't want a time along with it. We only want a date. I'm going to change it to the date. So see the format have been changed. Next to the formatting tab. So we have a short date. We have multiple dates option available. So as I have checked the date structure, that's why the date format has been available. If I do any other text form, the text formats would be available here. So I have different things. So I can choose any date format here. So which thing should be the perfect thing? So I will be choosing this date, month, and year. So see, you got your results available here. And here, I have a relationship defined. The lookup tables are complete. My fact table has been complete. My star schema has been completed. My relationships have been completed. Now we're going to move forward and see the further. So let us take an example. If I click here on the month column, by default, as an RPC suggested, that I should be using my table visual. The next it says add of data. I'm going to go to my sales data or my key my years and I'm going to choose my DAX total sales. So see, as I click there, it automatically changed the, the visual. See, now you got a line chart. I'm going to change it to the table to see the results. So see, I got a 154 million total sales and each month separate sales available. So my day table is working perfectly. So if I click here, descending order, my higher sales Starting from the November, then August, then December, I'm moving forwardly. See, I have a multiple options to create a visual. Now that's a perfect thing. It means remove this visual. So I have an option to export this data to my Excel work by using a CSV file. Remove it. And now let's go to the data view and we're going to add some more columns, play with the dash in our session. So let us resume the recording and the session. As previously, we have learned how to make a, a date table and then make a relationship in the model view uh, with the fact table or the lookup table. So now I'm gonna use another DAX measure to find the dates available. So again, under the table tools, you have an option of calculation, write a new table using a calculation. So yes, I got an option. I can type the name of my table. It's a date. And the next, I'm gonna use a function that tells add column. So what does this add column do? It says returns a table with new columns specified by the direct measure. So as you remember, that previously when we were preparing the date table using the calendar auto, it returns a single column, which copies, fetch, and then paste a table, a column in a new table called the date. So currently it will also make a new code table with multiple columns as we specify in our DAX measure. So first of all, it says give the reference of the table. 
we don't have a date table currently available. So I will be finding my date table using the calendar auto function and closing the parentheses, keep it a blank. Then it says, give the name of the column, which I want to find. Yes, I want to type my month full name, the column name. And then it says, give the expression. So for this, I'm going to find here again, format tab, format function. So what does the format function do? It says converts a value to a text specified in the number format. So for this, I'm going to give the value, which is the dates available. So this, I'm going to type the dates available using my calendar. So see, this date column has been already been prepared using the add column and the calendar auto function. I'll be selecting it. So see, it says, give me the reference of the format. I put, open the inverted commas and type mm four time m that represents the format of the month's name. Closing the inverted commas. And then I have an optional thing to open the local name or pressing the further thing. So I'm gonna close my format function by closing the parentheses. And the next, again, I want to close the function to double close the add columns option. So I have prepared my DAX, my year for the date table. Pressing enter, I got a result. So see, I got my dates. It represents the date and the time and the month full name. So for this, Remember that we didn't got a two columns when we I use a calendar auto function. So this is a difference between the two DAX measures which we have seen in this session of the dates as moving forward. So let us see how we can find the short month's name as a Jan, Fab, March, only the first three letters of your month. So as previously, we have calculated the month full name by giving the formatting of M typing the four times. Now we're going to copy it again and going to type a different format. So let us see further. So I'm going to put comma sign in my formula in the DAX my year previously calculated. So it says give the reference of the name to yes. What should be the name to I'm going to type month. short name, open the inverted commas, closing the inverted commas, then comma it says give the expression to. So for this, I'm gonna type my format function again. So say, it says give me the value first. So I have the dates available. So date column, comma, this date column should be referred in a square bracket. You should remember that the square bracket should be used as a value then it says, give me the reference of the format, open the inverted commas and type M three times to get a result. Then close the parentheses and press enter key from your keyboard. And you can see a short month's name. That's a perfect thing. So see, you got your dates, you got your month full name, you got your month short name. And then I'm going to find a new column. So yes, for this, as we are practicing DAX for the dates, so I'm going to find my years equal to, there's a DAX my year called year. If I open the parenthesis, it says give me the reference of the dates. So yes, I have my dates and the date column. So closing the parenthesis, I got my result. So see, I got my year 2018, 2019. If I open a drop down i got my results yes uh, we are learning very fastly the next new column yes in this column i'm gonna use my short month name and the year together short month year so i'm gonna type my short month column and then press space and then shift and and sign and then the year is available already calculated 
I'm pressing enter key from a keyboard. So see, I got my result, Jan 2018. And to see further, I got a list of my DAX from a year, list of my months along with the years. See, that's a great thing. Let us see forward as we are creating a date table again. So we need our data modeling and the relationship again. I'm going to go to my relationship view, the model view. I then select my date table at the place of my lookup tables. So see, I got a place for my lookup tables. And here I got my fact table already. So I have my order dates and that's going to be match with my dates available in the date table. So drag and drop policy for this. So see, I got a one way relation and green highlighting that it is accurate. It is a correct relation So see. I got my years, my got short months, year, short month name, full month name. That's a perfect thing. So we are practicing that side by side and see here the dates. So it shows us time as well. I'm gonna change the structure as previously instructed to you. So I have a column tool optional tab of opening the first loop structure group, opening it and clicking on the dates structure. See, I got my dates available here and go to the report view. Let's see us analysis. So yes, I'm going to select my years from here. So see, it gives us a sum of years. I don't want a sum of years. Choose a table. So see, it is not working perfectly. Just wait for a second. Yes, I did hierarchy and I have my dates available the years and the next thing, what I gonna do? I gonna take my total sales, yearly total sales, and that's a perfect thing. So you see how our DAX my years are working accurately. Let's play with the DAX and visualize our data. So see, I have opened my date table as previously calculated the short month year, I'm clicking on it, my column, and see by default, it choose a table, see my April 2018, and moving forwardly, you see the result. Next, I want to add my total sales. I'm going to click on the key in my year table, my DAX total sales. To so see, as I click, I've seen that you suggested that it should be a bar chart. So as I selected, the bar chart have been already been prepared in a second. I got a monthly result along with the year to so see my January 18 and it's going to be moved forward. My May 18 sales will be lowest sales at the below of all the values and see the monthly result. That's a perfect thing of the DAX storytelling. So today we have learned many DAX my years and along with the visualization. So thanks for this session. We're going to look forward in the further session.